Hi everyone, today I'm gonna to give you an idea for gifting. These are cherry eggnog tea breads that I made in the mini fluted pan. So instead of making a big loaf, I made these cute little cakes. They're so adorable, aren't they? So you'll start first by taking your mini fluted pan and I brushed it with some Baker's Ease. Now I've used this before. Um, it's equal parts vegetable oil, flour and shortening. I use Spectrum organic shortening, I use vegetable oil, and then for the flour I use gluten-free. So you can use whatever you have on hand, mix it up into a paste, just keep it in a prep bowl in the fridge, and then whenever you need it, you just take it and brush on your pans. So it's especially helpful when you're using pans that have grooves in them, or like the muffin pan or um, a brownie pan. So anytime a recipe calls for greasing and flouring, that's what you're going to use that Baker's Ease for. And it's homemade, so it doesn't cost much to make. So I've used the stand mixer. I've got three quarters of a cup of butter and white sugar. And I love the stand mixer because it has a cream function as a preset. So all I had to do was turn the dial, set it on cream, and it was ready to go. So to this, we're gonna add a few more things. And I wanted to show you the Tower of Prep Bowls, by the way, since I had all three of them out. This is the one cup. These come in sets of six with lids. This is the two cup. It comes in a set of two, also with lids, and the same set uh, of two with lids. So we're gonna take the eggs. I've got three of them, and you're gonna add them in one at a time. So let's go ahead and just close this up. I'm gonna go ahead and mix it up. If you're an eggnog fan, you're gonna love this. And if you don't think you like eggnog, you'll probably like this too, because it's really, really delicious. So I'm just gonna turn it on custom, on the three setting. I'm just gonna slowly add these eggs in, one at a time. Good. And now I'm gonna add the flour. So all of my dry ingredients are mixed up right here. I'm just gonna hit the button again to pause it like that. And in here I have um, the baking powder, baking, excuse me, baking powder, salt, freshly grated nutmeg. I showed you how to do that the other day and flour. So all of my, you know, the baking powder and nutmeg and salt are on top. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pour most of it in. I'm going to leave about two tablespoons ish <laughs> of flour in the bottom because I'm gonna use this to coat my cherries, okay? And now we'll go ahead and add a cup of eggnog. So if you are motivated to try a cake from scratch, this is a really great one. It's so, so delicious. I only make it once a year. I should do it more often, but I don't know if you can get eggnog year round. It's just a really special cake. So we're gonna use a slow speed here because I've got flour and I didn't pull out my my pour shield. You want to mix this up really well and you can turn the dial to increase the setting. Actually I had it on the beat cycle so it's doing that automatically. All right that's well incorporated and here we go. Okay so you're going to take a whole jar of maraschino cherries it's really important that you drain them well. I actually put paper towel on my cutting board and um, chopped it and then dabbed it again with paper towel. You wanna make sure these are really dry. So I'm mixing them up with flour for the same reason you do this, you do this when you're making muffins with blueberries or other berries or fruits. You want to coat it so that they don't all sink to the bottom. So if you've ever had that happen in your baking, that's why. And this is just a little trick to fix it. So um, it doesn't take a lot. So instead of adding additional flour, I just saved a little bit. Okay, that's pretty well coated, just like that. The Deluxe Stand Mixer is a popular choice among my hosts. When they have their parties with me online, we can get them for half price. Look how smooth this is. Um, we're gonna go ahead and fold in the cherries. Now, folding is a very gentle way of mixing everything in. And the reason why you wanna do that in this case is you don't wanna end up with pink bread. <laughs> if you want pink, then beat it, but you don't really want that. So we're just gonna dump all these cherries in 
And then the best way to fold is actually just to use your scrapers. So you basically just scrape from the outside and in. And if you just keep doing that, eventually everything will be well incorporated. So this bread is super festive looking. If you don't wanna make it in the little mini uh, fluted pans, uh, fluted cakes like I am doing, you can use a loaf pan. I highly recommend you take a little piece of parchment paper and put it in the bottom, that way it'll come out better. Okay, do you see how that's all folded in? And my batter is not pink from over mixing, so that's key. All right, so one batch of this will fit in the wells of your mini fluted pan. Now, if you are using your mini fluted pan for other things, you can um, just assume anytime you're making banana bread, pumpkin bread, zucchini bread, one loaf will fit into here. And I'm gonna just take uh, my large scoop and it takes about two and a half scoops per well. So I start by going with two on either side and just kind of fill those up. The scent of eggnog and nutmeg in this recipe is really beautiful. I think you'll enjoy it. It's really different than other recipes that I've tried. And something else that I learned today, I should have taken pictures of this. I made a batch earlier, which we're gonna decorate together in a little bit. Um, as you saw, there's quite a bit of butter in this. And in a loaf pan, it's got a tall side, so it's no big deal. But here, the sides are not very tall. So see, it is gonna take about three scoops per one. So anyway, I was baking them and some of the butter bubbled over. <laughs> and you can imagine the smoke in my kitchen today. Um, it really overpowered the scent of these beautiful cakes. Fortunately, the cakes taste great, but there was, we had windows open, <laughs> fan going. So I made the mistake for you so that you won't have to. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to put your fluted pan on a sheet pan to grab any butter that might want to escape. And it wasn't even very much, but if you've baked before, you know it doesn't take a lot of butter bubbling over to make an awfully stinky mess. So take it from me, that's what you're gonna do. <laughs> All right, we're gonna smooth out the batter. This is gonna go in the oven. Now here's where you're gonna make a change depending on what pan you're using. If you are baking in a loaf pan, you're gonna put it at 325 for about an hour and 15 minutes. The mini fluted pan though, you're gonna set it at 350 and it only takes about 20 to 25 minutes. So it's a lot faster um, here, which is great if you're in a hurry. Okay, just like that. Oops, I think I see a little bit more batter and there's a spot right there. There we go, got it all used up. Okay, so make sure that your sheet pan is wider than your fluted pan. And now I just saved you the mess of your cleaning your oven because you don't wanna do that, I'm sure. So how do you decorate them up? The frosting is super simple. It's powdered sugar and eggnog, really, really easy. I put it into a Ziploc bag, I snipped the tip, and here I have the mini cakes. There's two left from that batch of six. You can do the math. I've already given some away, and uh, we've had some already too. And you're just gonna drizzle that frosting all over the top. You might need to make extra, and because um, I actually like to do it like this as opposed to drizzling a glaze for this. I think it looks really pretty. Don't you agree? Isn't that nice? So as soon as you've finished it, you can garnish it with a little bit of toasted almonds. And then you're just gonna let them kind of dry, let that frosting dry a little bit, and those almonds will stick right onto the cakes. So when you do pull these out of the oven, you do want to let them rest for five minutes before you invert it, and then let them cool completely before you do what I just did. And then you'll have these beautiful little cakes. Now they're small, but they're really rich, and one of them is really enough for two people. So if you're gifting them, think about who you're gifting them to, and um, you can do the math and figure out how many you should give them. Now, if you wanna make them ahead, here's what you can do. Bake and cool your cakes, freeze them, 
And then when you are ready to gift them or eat them at yourself, go ahead and add your glaze over the top and it'll be a lot easier to transport. I hope you'll give these a try. I've already posted the recipe and I'll post the links for the products that I use so you can take a look at them. Enjoy them this holiday season. Take care.